What's up? I'm back from Augusta and uh, getting ready to do a skills clinic with uh, Big Orange South Bay Woman over by Westchester Parkway. So check out some of the things we're going to cover and I uh, hope you like the show. Bye. Everybody, thank you for thank you for coming to our Peloton Skills Clinic, being taught by Rasan. I think pretty much anybody here knows who he is, but for those who don't, a few quick words. He has over 10 national titles to his name, in addition to being one, to being one of the best bike racers uh, in the country, and certainly one of the best bike racers to come out of California. He's also a teacher and he has unbelievable expertise and knowledge about what to do on a bicycle in virtually any any scenario you're going to run across Rasan has been in it he's an active racer he's a great guy he's a dad and this is sort of uh, you know he's 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 this is kind of what he does uh, and we're really fortunate to have him agree to come out and, and, and give us a clinic today and I'm not going to really say any much more than that. We've got a couple of assistants here, uh, Greg Seranian and John Stark, who I think you all know, and they'll chime in uh, from time to time. But uh, Rasan's got a program for us today, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to him. Thank you for coming, Rasan. Thank you, sir. I should take you everywhere with me. That was a great introduction, man. Um, yeah, so thanks for the opportunity, number one. I've been doing this for... Uh, if I continue the race this season, it'll be 22 years straight. I really didn't take a break. Uh, even when I was in college, I was racing and almost fell in out of class because I was traveling so much trying to be a bike racer. I have uh, had clinics with like purely racers. I've done clinics with people who just bought a bike and literally showed up that day to clip in. So I've kind of seen it all. And like Seth said, I've been in a lot of situations, um, good and bad. Some are my own fault, some are others, and of course you try to learn from them. Um, so today, I think the three things that we're gonna talk about and cover is um, safety, always number one. Uh, some of the things we take for granted because we've been riding for a long time is uh, like not checking to see if your front wheel's on. Especially if you're traveling in your car, or maybe you did a ride on Friday you showed up, you had your car, your bike in your car, you showed up to your house and you just kind of threw it on and threw it in the garage. Next thing you know, you hop on your bike Saturday morning and you didn't even double check if your front screw was tight or something like that. Total things we take for granted. Trust me, I did that, shattered my wrist. That scenario, exactly what happened. Um, so every time I get on the bike, like this morning I left, I stopped at the light. I was like, oh, better check, you know? It's just, it's habit. Uh, Usually the back, you're okay. It's the front is that you don't want to come out. Um, so that's one of the first things I do. I uh, always talk to people who wear their helmets crazy. If you guys know Regal, 
Cruz, big guy, Monster Media, he crashed a month ago or two. Really bust his head up pretty bad. One, his helmet was too small. Two, he didn't have his straps on nice. They were super loose. These tabs right here were way down here. These tabs are for a reason. Perfect example right here. I hate to pick on you. <laughs> but these tabs should not be way down here. Anybody know what these tabs are for? So the laws of gravity are not in your favor when you're going towards the ground, right? It's just sheer force. These tabs should be right under your ear because it helps your helmet stays in the proper place, which should be right under your eyebrow. Up here, it won't help you, right? Or a too small helmet or something like that. Um, again, these are things that most of us that have been riding for a long time, we just take for granted, you know? Uh, but that was the difference between him having two huge hematomas on his head versus none. He was concussed, broken collarbone, the whole nine yards. Like, broken collarbone, okay, you don't want to hit your head, right? Uh, you only have one brain. Um, it doesn't heal too well. So, that's some of the safety, right? Uh, we'll talk about safety with riding groups as we start to ride. Uh, two, in my opinion, is accountability. When you ride in a group, everyone's accountable for yourself and for the others. So not only do you have to think about your safety, you have to think about the safety of people around you too. And then as a group, I think we will be much better if everyone thought like that. And three is confidence. You gotta have confidence because if you don't have confidence, forget about it. I can teach you everything that I know under the sun, but if you don't try it and continue to do it, even if you're doing it wrong, you just continue to do it until you get it right, we'll be okay. So don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask something, it's not a problem. Um, I'm not gonna say I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot. Well, that's a wrap. Clinic was a, uh was a success had about 30 people out uh, they were very uh, open to asking questions and uh, open to learn that's what it's all about so thanks for the opportunity big orange uh, appreciate it anybody want to put on a clinic in your hometown contact methods to winning uh, we do them everywhere we got some coming up in uh, August and uh, yeah that's it we're doing our part get back to the sport and now get the cruise home peace y'all